Welcome and hello. This is a video lesson in Hi8. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the user interface. That is the user interface of what you see on the screen when you open up the program. This is more of an introduction type of lesson. So if you've already downloaded and installed the program, this is probably the, a good place to start for your next lesson. This lesson covers chapter two, user interface. So if you wanted to follow along with the documentation, you can just go up to the help menu and then click on Hi8 Help. That'll open up a PDF file of the user's manual. And what we're talking about in this lesson is chapter two. It starts on page 21. Okay, so what we're going to be covering here is the file menus and then the buttons in the toolbars, which is just below the menus. Also, the Project Explorer panel, which is over here on the left. And then finally, the plot window or graphics window or map window, whatever you describe this main section of the user interface. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by talking about the different menus across the top. And I'm also going to be talking about the buttons at the same time in the toolbars, the buttons and other controls like these drop downs are contained within the toolbars. The toolbars are mobile, so you can like just click on a toolbar and then undock it, move it around to another place in the user interface if you want. And then um, you can also reorganize them. So right here is the toolbar for culvert. You can also toggle on and off these culvert, these toolbars by going up to display toolbars, and then we can toggle off the culvert toolbar. Poof, there it goes. And we can add it back in. So display, toolbars, and culvert, it's back. Okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's uh, go ahead and start talking about the file menu. By the way, a lot of these buttons basically perform the same functionality as the menu items. So for instance, file new is the same as clicking on the new button right here. File open is the same thing as the open button right here. So a lot of the buttons pretty much just serve as mouse shortcuts but you'll notice that there isn't not a button for every single menu item. So it's just sort of for the more popular menu items. There are buttons and other graphical controls in the toolbars. One more thing to mention is if you click on Alt, so say for instance, you don't have your mouse and your uh, touchpad isn't working, you can just click on Alt F to invoke the file menu or Alt D for the display menu, Alt C, whatever letter is underlined. You can see there is actually an underlined letter in each of these menus. So let's go with Alt F. Boom, it brings up the file menu. I can just arrow down or I can just arrow over to the next menu. So arrow right, 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 left, 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 down, 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 up, up, up. I can also click escape to escape out of that context menu. Or I could just go Control F, Control D, Control C, Control U. So anyway, you can just hit enter to make that selection. And then yeah, you don't need your mouse to make selections on the menu. Okay, let's go ahead and finally get started. The file menu has basic file management tasks. You've probably seen this in other programs. File new is as a new file. Open a file, close a file, save and save as. Save is really just an update, but if you haven't saved that particular file already, it will actually change to save as and require you to specify a path and file name of the project that you're saving. Now, some of these menu items are currently grayed out, like print and was it recent file? And you'll see that in some of the other menus as well. It's only grayed out because I don't have a saved project and can't simply display or demonstrate everything in these menus. But we'll get to that in future lessons. Also, this lesson is really just an overview. I'm not going to dig into any details. We're just talking about the user interface, not necessarily the details on how all of these features work. Okay, so next up is print. That'll open up a print uh, set, setup dialog box where you can specify print settings and ultimately print settings right here. This refers to a few of the drop downs actually. So these three drop downs for units, outlet control, and exit loss method, those are the three options available in file settings. You can go ahead and make those changes as well as icon size apparently. And then last in the file menu is recent files and then exit. So that would close the program, but I'm not going to do that. Next up is the display menu. The, this menu deals with modifying what and how you see the user interface. So the Project Explorer, for instance, that gives the focus to the Project Explorer, which is over here on the left side of the panel. I already have my Project Explorer visible and invoked, so that really didn't do a whole lot. Next up is the status bar. Down at the very bottom of the window, right down here, it says ready. 
but you this is the status bar and you may see other messages that say other things down here and because the status bar takes up so little space i'm probably just going to always keep that on so just always keep that checked on you can also check it again and it'll be checked off and the status bar is gone but i'm going to go ahead and keep the status bar on next up is toolbars i already mentioned this at the beginning but we have different toolbars for macros culvert views and map tools that will toggle on the different toolbars that you're seeing and then finally the last display option is view this pertains to the view that you're seeing in the main map area our options are side view front view and plan view the plan view is what we currently have enabled that's looking down on the map and then side view and front view pertain to a specific culvert crossing where we can see the different barrels either from the side or looking straight down straight down the barrel. All right, um, next menu item is culvert. Now here we have a bunch of grayed out options simply because I don't have a project and a, a culvert saved. This culvert menu allows the user to create and edit culvert crossing objects and to view computations. So the first one is new culvert crossing. What it's gonna do is bring up this user interface for us to create a culvert crossing. It's called culvert two, that's the name of it. We have our individual culvert barrels listed over here. It's starting us off with one already, just the default name is culvert one. And once we go ahead and specify all of these numbers, we can go ahead and click okay. I'm getting a warning message here because I didn't fill out the data. That's fine for now. I'm just gonna click ignore errors and continue. And then it added this culvert crossing two over here to my project explorer with my one and only default culvert. Next item down in the culvert menu is culvert crossing data. So once I have a culvert crossing selected over here in the project explorer, I can go uh, culvert and then edit the data. This is the data that we just saw. And again, if I click OK and then ignore errors, that's how to save and close. Some of this functionality is available is by doing a right click on the specific element over here in the project explorer. So if I do a right click on culvert crossing, we can access that same dialog box by making this first selection for the culvert crossing data. And boom, here it is. All right, the other options in the culvert menu, they're currently grayed out, but we have analyze crossing, energy dissipation, AOP stream simulation, and low flow hydraulics. Analyze crossing is for analyzing results. And then energy dissipation is will open up an energy dissipation dialog box. That's for the selected culvert crossing. AOP, that refers to the aquatic organism passage. And then same thing for the low flow hydraulics. And then after that, we have notes. So if you wanted to add notes to a particular culvert crossing, you can just type it in here. I'll just type in test two, okay. And then whenever that crossing is selected, you can just go back to the notes and then make some edits. You can also edit these notes by going right click on the culvert crossing and crossing notes. Boom, here are the same changes. I keep changing it and saving it with a new number. So that's how that gets accessed and saved multiple ways. And as you notice, when I right clicked on the culvert crossing, it brought up a few other options, such as adding an individual culvert, deleting the culvert crossing, duplicating the culvert crossing, or renaming the culvert crossing. So if you duplicate, for instance, it will create a copy and it'll have the exact same data. So for instance, if I open up the uh, crossing notes. I have the same notes as I had of the copy, but it's a copy by value, not by reference. So here is how to delete. Boom, it's gone. And then rename is the last option here. So maybe I'll have a 2A and a 2B. So we'll just call that one 2A. Or the crossing may be related to the roadway or the station number or something related to the location of that crossing. It could just be an identification num number that's associated with the database. And then the other crossing data could be in a separate database file. All right, the next three menu items are units, outlet control option, and exit loss option. And basically all you can do with these three menu items is to change the units, the outlet control option, and the exit loss option. So we can see what the options are for units. It's either US customary or metric. For outlet control, it's either profile or full flow. And then exit loss option, it's either standard or the USU method. Those three same controls are in the drop down right here. So if I wanted to change the units to metric, for instance, boom, that's all you have to do. It's changed, but I can change it back by either going to the menu, units, and then click on US customary. Then it gets updated in this drop down right here. 
a little bit repetitive for me. I wouldn't have designed it this way, but that's how it is. And apparently it was important enough to have on the toolbar and use up all this space. All right, the next menu is a maps menu that is right here. This map menu is used for loading maps into the project display. And our first option is the launch the map viewer. So if you go ahead and click that, it's going to open up a separate map viewer dialog box, virtual earth map locator. And with this dialog box, we can zoom in and identify the project location. And then from there, identify the different culvert crossings. So this is pretty advanced. It's a little bit beyond the level of detail I want to cover in this lesson. I should also probably mention if you have not already opened up the map viewer, then you're probably going to get a dialog box that asks you for permission. So you have to say yes. I had to say yes a couple of times. And in fact, I even had to close my high application and then reopen it. And then when I came back, I was able to launch the map viewer and it worked just like I expected it to. Okay. So just a little heads up there. Also, uh, next up in the maps menu is the open image. This allows you to add a background map or a background image. So I've got a couple prepared here. For instance, I've got a highway here with a couple river crossings or what would be a culvert crossing. This is just a generic aerial map. This particular background image feels a little bit too strong. Of course, I want to be focusing on the culvert data itself. So, you know, if that's the case for you, you can open up and add a background image with a little bit more transparency, sort of grayed back a little bit. So my preference is to add a background image that is a little bit lighter because I'm focusing on the elements, the culvert crossings and the culvert barrels, not so much on the map. You can also add and remove images by just doing a right click on the map display. Open image, that's the same dialog box we had when we clicked on map open image and then right click. You can define map or remove image. We'll click on define map. That is, oh, that brings up the, the virtual map editor. We saw that when clicking map launch map viewer and then to remove the image. Boom. There we go. All right. Well, that's it for the maps menu. If you click on the help menu, we have these options here. This menu is helpful and includes a lot of documentation, including the user's manual, the quick start documentation and the HDS5 document. Um, the user's manual is what I'm using. You can go ahead and click that. It'll open up the user's manual in a PDF in a browser. I've already done that. I'm going to demonstrate that with uh, the quick start documentation, or actually let's do it the HDS5. So I'll go ahead and click on that. It opened up a PDF file. Okay. It looks like it opened up in Adobe for me. This is a 328 page document that talks about hydraulic design of highway culverts. A lot of the high eight equations and documentations are associated with this document. So I would recommend going up to file and then just save as, and then save that file somewhere on your computer, because I think it's just as important as the user's manual, which is what I'm using to talk about this lesson. It just gives a little bit more detailed background information and equations, whereas the user's manual it discusses uh, using the program, uh, the user interface, and how to use high age, whereas the HDS5 document is a little bit more of, like I said, background information, equations, and theory about overt hydraulics and design. All right, so what are we on now? Help. Uh, beyond that, there's also HEC 14 documentation. This is hydraulic design of energy dissipators. The high eight energy dissipator module uses those methods. HEC 26, this is associated with aquatic organism passages, and then a few other documents right here. The last one is about HI8. So if you open that up, it'll let you know which version of HI8 you're using and uh, some other information right there. Okay. So that's it for the menus. I know I didn't talk about the buttons or the toolbars as much, but basically it will be the same functionality that you find in the menus. So what is this one, for instance? New culvert crossing. Okay. That's the same thing as going up to culvert and then new culvert crossing. And then what is this one? Uh, crossing data. That's basically editing the crossing data by editing, opening the data window, just like that. We'll talk about some of these buttons and their functionality in the later lessons. All right. So that was the menu. That was the buttons. There's also the project explorer window over here. This is a menu that has a free structure. So you can click the plus and minus to expand or collapse your projects inside of projects are your crossings. And then inside your crossings are your individual culvert barrels. You can see the icon is a folder for the project, a folder and a culvert icon for the crossing. And then the individual culvert barrels 
have an icon that represents the shape of that barrel. So for instance, this is a circular shaped barrel, culvert one. We can open up that data and then the shape is right here. So over towards the right half of this interface, there's culvert data. There's the name of it. We can call this circle or circular. And then the shape is circular. And then I click OK. And then just ignore the errors and just click OK. And now it says circle. This one is box. So if I open up that data, we have concrete box right here. We could change it to something else and it would display a different icon. OK. Also within the Project Explorer, you can do a right click and see different context menu items, some of which we've already talked about. And then others are pretty self-explanatory, such as add, edit, delete, create report, edit notes. So we can have notes associated with the project. Project notes right here, you can type in the project title, the designer, the date, and any actually just a free form text. And then the crossings have notes. There's the crossings notes. And then individual culvert barrels also support notes. So there's notes at all three levels. In these lessons, these videos that I'm preparing, I'm not going to be writing too many notes, probably none. But I'm pointing it out because if you actually are working on a project with Hi8 on a team, it would be really important to add notes so that other people on your team know what's going on and know any of the important details that's associated with a particular element. All right, the last part of the user interface is what I'm calling the plot window or graphics window or plot menu or map window. The three different views in the plot window here, I already talked about, you go up to display and then view, and then you have a side view, front view, and plan view. Right now, plan view is the only thing that I can view because the uh, the project just isn't quite set up yet. But I'm going to rely on the user's manual for this last part of the lesson. This is the bottom of page 30, 31, bottom of page 31, where it talks about the three different views. Then if we scroll down here, it first talks about the side view right here. So up at the top, we have uh, the name of the crossing and the flow rate. It says 400 CFS. And then uh, this side view is the side view that displays a single culvert barrel that's sliced lengthwise. So what we have in the brown that represents the embankment and also the tailwater invert. The black line right here represents the uh, culvert barrel. The green line is going to be the normal depth. The red dashed line, that's the critical depth of the water. And then the solid blue line here, this represents the water surface profile through the culvert. And then the dashed blue lines right here and here uh, represents the uh, headwater and tailwater water surface elevations. The user's manual also mentions that this roadway is only plotted for a single elevation. So in the event that the, the roadway has a, a severe crown to it, then that may affect things. All right, so the next view is the front view. So if you go to display and then views and then click on front view, what you're going to be seeing in the main map display is something like this. The front view looks directly into the core barrels or barrel. So right now it looks like we have two box culverts in this view. And then what you're seeing is the culvert shapes, the roadway and the water surface elevation at the headwater side of the culvert. And then finally, the last view is the plan view. This is looking straight down on your map. So that's what I have selected already, view maps. The plan view is particularly helpful if you wanted to get a general idea of the location of your culvert crossings. And it's also helpful if you have a background map that's uh, displayed in the background, as well as the relative location between your culvert crossings with respect to the map. Well, that's it for this lesson in Hi8. We talked about the user interface. Specifically, we talked about the different menu items, the different toolbars, the buttons and the controls, as well as the Project Explorer window and the main map window.